Finland. And they defeat Belarus 8 to 1. Don't think of your next job as your next job. And Tina Kirstner. And the puck goes right back into the Canadian zone off the opening faceoff. Canada starts out. Dupuy ahead to Sonanara. The veteran line starting for Canada. Shot right on goal. Turned aside by Allen. In behind the goal. The Swedes start out. Anderson. Vanilla Anderson up to Samuelson at center ice with a burst of speed. One of the smallest players on the ice at 5-3. Therese Brisson bottles her up in the corner, and Hefford comes up with it for Canada. Ahead to Dupuy, one-timer to Sanahara. The Canadians looking to get more flow and more tempo into their game after some sluggish starts in the first two, Margot. They just want to dump it in, four-check hard, because that's where they get their momentum. Cheryl Pounder can't get it. Ruth comes up with it to Holst. This is the top line for Sweden, and the captain, Holst, gets a soft wrist shot on Kim Sampierre. Holtz and Ruth played together at the uni University of Minnesota Duluth. Holtz, a big, strong forward, can power to the net, big shot also. She was the leading scorer in Nagano for Sweden, two goals and three assists in five games. But the Swedish team has fallen on hard times lately, finishing seventh one year ago at the World Championships and crushed 13 to nothing by Canada at that tournament. The pass ahead to Cassie Campbell. Sails long. There's Wickenheiser first into the Swedish zone for Canada. Wickenheiser still has it. Plays it back along the boards to the captain, Cassie Campbell. Campbell cycling now with Wickenheiser as the champ goes up for Canada. Rink wide pass to Cheryl Pounder. Pounder's wrist shot through traffic deflected in front. Goyette bangs behind the net with Olmblad. Across to Wickenheiser in front. Oh, and the pass right through the crease. And Goyette just couldn't get her stick on it. Pounder pinching from the point, in behind the goal, and is picked up by Edstrand. Edstrand's pass to Ruth along the right side. The Swedes looking to change on the fly. Ruth will dump it in, and they'll go. Here comes Canada, try to take advantage of this change. Bechard punches it ahead to Bottrell. Bottrell in ahead of the puck, and it'll be called on the offside. Early at 1.40 of this first period. Throughout the game, you'll notice Canada cycling low and being successful at it. Jennifer Bottrell, very smart hockey player, very solid, coming from Harvard University, coming and finishing off her uh, year next year at Harvard, right now contributing to the Olympic team for Canada. Here's a chance now for Shuchuk in on goal. Backhand turned aside by Annika Allen. The first big chance for Canada. There's some contact. In beside the Canadian goal, no call in a non-contact sport. Margot Lee will allow incidental contact. They will, but they, it's very subjective, and that's where you get some arguments sometimes through a game. It's historic. Being forechecked in behind the Canadian goal, Isabel Chartrand starts out in her Olympic debut. Ahead to Béchard. Béchard has Bottrell on the right side. Bottrell backhand pass right through the slot, and Chartrand, pinching from the point, didn't quite get there. Bechard behind the goal, ahead to Willett, across in front, one-timer by Bottrell right on. Here's another chance and through the crease. This young line putting some pressure on the Swedes early. Finally, it's out to center ice as Sandelson gives chase. Dana Antal, part of the under-22 program that has provided at least half of the young players on this team. The development is phenomenal for Canada. When you can get involved with the under-22 under program, Mark, it just gives them so much more international experience. Oh, the pass to Sanderson long, and it'll be called on the icing as Allen takes a swig. It's interesting that they started Annika and Allen, but now you can understand why. The experience of being in the net before against Canada really helped as she looked. Willette finds Jennifer Botterill, and Annika Allen closes up the pads to seal the deal. Yes, facing Harvard's all-time leading scorer, Tammy Lee Shuchuk, at the point. Keeney's wrist shot right through. That was close. Antel turning quickly and smartly inside the Swedish zone. Drops it behind. Piper battling along the boards. She's got two goals already in this tournament. The young 20-year-old from Scarborough, Ontario. A late addition to the Canadian team. Goulet. Head match the puck for Piper. It's too far. Icing is signaled. And it will be called automatically. Part of the international rules, Margot, in... Olympic hockey, the icings are called instantly as soon as they cross the line. It is considered no-touch ice, so as soon as it goes down, but they're actually waving off, so you'll see it be being brought back to center ice because they feel that there was a mistake, so it's back to center. And Louise Edstrand scored twice in a three-game series the Swedes had with Finland. In fact, Sweden upset the Finns in that pre-Olympic tournament in one of the games. Boying their hopes here in Salt Lake City. Canada's pass.
pass too far for Sanahara. Colts now regrouping with Ed Strand. Across to Almblad. This is the number one line for Sweden. Holt with Ruth on the right side. The two of them, students at the University of Minnesota Duluth. There's a shot just wide by Holt. Becky Keller plays it behind the line to Pounder. Pounder head manning the puck. Pepper to the left side. Wickenheiser on the ice for Canada now. In behind the goal, barging her way through. Checked by Edstrand and Sweden comes up with the puck. Kept in by Chartrand. Her shot right on goal. Cassie Campbell, Wickenheiser, banging with Ruth. Edstrand kicks it ahead. Here comes Bergstrand now for Sweden. Bergstrand start circling as the Swedes change in the fly with the puck in their own zone. Edstrand now to center ice for Sweden. Her shot deep inside the Canadian zone. St. Pierre stopped it behind the Canadian goal. Chartrand up the left side. The one-time pass from Campbell bounces off her stick and down the ice. Some pretty even play by both teams. I'm actually quite impressed with the Swedes. They're skating well and playing a very simple game, trying to keep the Canadian players on the outside. Canadian players aren't panicking. Cassie Campbell, knowing that her team just has to stay the course, work the game plan, and they will be successful. This is not the same Swedish team, Margot, that lost 13 to nothing one year ago to Canada. They look sharp and confident here in the early going of this preliminary round game. Brisson's backhand pass ahead to Bottrell. Bottrell headmans to Bechard. She loses her footing, and the puck sails inside to Lindbergh. Kim Bechard plays it hard ahead to Bottrell. Backhand in front, and Shuchuk tried to tip that in front of Allen, backing right into the Swedish netminder. Confidence is everything, Mark. You want to make sure. Here's a chance right on goal again. Annika Allen equal to the task. Brisson at the point. A heavy shot. Hard deflected rebound. Shuchuk shot. Just wide. Bouncing off the pad of Allen. Bottrell back to Shuchuk. Shuchuk into the slot. Quick chance. Second chance from Antal. Repelled again as Samuelson picks it up. That was Heaney pinching from the point for Canada. And we've seen the Canadian defense taking all kinds of chances in the offensive zone. They really like jumping in. They like creating a Well, Ed plays it back into the neutral zone to Geraldine Heaney. Heaney drops it for Pounder. Pounder, her pass, Errant, and picked up by Sweet. Anderson dumps it down the ice. Icing signaled at 5.59 of this first period, and the Swedes giving Canada a game. To Sid, it was a miracle. Come here, you little wormy worm. To Manny, it was a pain. Ah! To Diego, it was... Where's the baby? A playmate. There he is! Hey! On March 15th, Ray Romano. Don't make me reach back there. John Leguizamo. Take the shot. <laughs> Dennis Leary. I've eaten things that didn't complain this much. And Scrat. <laughs> Ice Age, March 15th, only in theaters. Ah. Uh, uh. Welcome back to the Peaks Arena in Salt Lake City as our coverage continues of the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. No score, Canada and Sweden here. Six and a half minutes into the first period. Here's Sherry Piper buzzing inside the Swedish zone. Back pass. And that shot from Chuchuk just high and wide. So Storics pinching in from the point. Drop back as Hefford leaves it. Anderson, Anna Anderson reverses field and behind the Swedish goal. The puck is sent down the ice. Kim St. Pierre will stop it behind the icing line, and this will be icing against Sweden. Canadians have dominated play, but I'm very impressed with the Swedes. There hasn't been anything too incredibly threatening that Annika Allen hasn't had to uh, really go after. And we are talking about confidence earlier. I don't know if it has anything to do really with the coaching changes that have happened for Team Sweden. Yes, there was a firing just prior to the Olympic Winter Games as Peter Elander was relieved of his job. And Margo, that's no wonder, considering the performance of the Swedish team in the last six months. Dupuy loses her stick, tries to kick it ahead. There's a penalty coming here to Canada. Bergstrand trying to steer it outside of the Swedish zone. And referee Anu Hervonen is pulling off 
It appears to be Dupuis after she lost her stick there. It'll be a hooking penalty. You see Lori Dupuis battling. She holds on Grabs to the stick. stick of Janssen, and that's why she, she didn't have a stick, so instead of actually looking to play the body, she went after it and held the stick of Nana Janssen. So Lori Dupuis of Canada off for two minutes for holding the stick at 7.19 of the first period and the Swedes go on the power play for the first time as Danielle Sobajo looks at her own bench this Canadian team yet to be scored on in the tournament tremendous at the penalty kill and the power play rated number one in the Olympic tournament special teams is everything Mark if you got those working you, you're going to find a lot of success Holst keeps it in around the far side Bechard banks with her here's Holst now winds up big shot right on goal and Kim Sampierre makes the save Holst will shoot the puck. You need to get in front of that and defend that shot. She's got a cannon. Cycling out, Maria Root comes out, and it's actually Maria Root that takes a shot. Both offensive players, Erica Holst and Maria Root, a solid shot on net. Leading scorer from Nagano had no goals at the 2001 World Championships, and they're hoping that she regains her form. Root in front through the slot. Bergstrand right there. Samuelson drops it back at the point. Edstrand keeps it just in, but her pass is broken up by Cassie Campbell. The Swedes like setting up and trying to get quick shots off, but they have to limit the passes. When you have a shot on net, take it. Edstrand being muscled along the boards as the Swedes can't get it across the line. Now they dump it in. Cholander. Here's Omblad with Chase against... Chartrand, as they bang along the boards. Sestorix loses it. Alblad in behind the net to Peterson. Peterson loses control of the puck. And Dana Antal tries to backhand it out. Kept in at the blue line. Anderson fires it in. Chartrand now battling. Antal again tries to backhand, but can't get it outside the Canadian zone. Bichard racing for it. And finally, Canada relieves the pressure. Canada is so confident in the pressure on their penalty kill, and that doesn't allow the Swedes to set up at all. Scholander can't reach that pass. Canada gets it back out to center ice. Ellsberg, wide pass, intercepted by Sestorix. She shoots it down, it hits a skate, and here's a chance now for Wickenheiser. Hard shot right on goal. The hardest shot we've seen in this hockey game. Wickenheiser for checking. Still has control inside the Swedish zone. Here's Haley Wickenheiser right in front. Shot. Rebound. Oh. Hanukkah Allen holds on with Cassie Campbell parked right on her doorstep. Even though Canada's on a penalty kill, Haley Wickenheiser does a smart job of reading the play and seeing what's available and just taking it to the net. And that's probably the best opportunity on Sweden's power play that either team has had. But Hanukkah Allen stands on her post well and holds Haley Wickenheiser off. Wickenheiser with six points so far after two games of this tournament. Ranked in second place all time, tied with Cami Granato so far here in Salt Lake City. Young Natalie Darwitz of the Americans with a hat trick today and a 5 0 win over Finland has six goals and one assist. Here's another chance for the Canadians. And Sweden finally dumps it out to center ice. Therese Brisson back for it. Brisson wheeling. Dupuis. A three-on-one chance, and it's blown down on the offside. Vicky Sanahara went in just ahead with Canada on a three-on-one opportunity. We just finally saw Canada use their speed on this, on their breakout, and head man it up to the forwards. And Vicky Sanahara not very happy about that call. She thought she held on soon enough, and I thought she did too. Canadians killing the penalty to Dupuis, allowing just two shots on goal. Bechard getting chase. Comes up with it in the Swedish corner. Holt plays it off the boards in around behind the Swedish net. Holt headmans the puck to Ruth. Here comes Ruth with Alblad. Alblad as it go off her stick. The captain swipes at it. A high stick nearly caught the referee. Becky Keller returning for Canada. Plays it off the boards to Cheryl Pounder. Canadians out shooting Sweden 12 to 4 so far in this first period, but a still a scoreless tie. Jennifer Bottrell now beats the defense in on goal. Bottrell scores! And the Maple Leafs.
flies at the Peaks Arena as Jennifer Bottrell puts Canada on the board first. Great individual effort by Jennifer Bottrell getting by the Swedish player and going to that. Look at the move, patience, patience, and gets her on the far side blocker low. Watch her drag her over, makes all and make the move, and then finds the space to put the puck to the mesh. Jennifer Bottrell. It's 7-19, or rather 10-26 of the first period from Shuchuk and Bechard, and it's 1-0 Canada. Lindbergh setting up behind her own goal. Starts out for Sweden. Her pass broken up by Sherry Piper. Piper bucking along the far side against Weichmann. And then there's big Carolyn Ouellette. Back comes Sweden. Bergstrand dumps it in. Stopped by St. Pierre. Here comes Sherry Piper. Two goals and an assist so far in the Olympic tournament. Piper tries to go around the Swedish defensewoman Anderson and has it picked. Here's Anderson now. Big shot. Oh, and a blocker save. St. Pierre had to be sharp there. Anderson still with the puck in behind the Canadian goal. Samuelson tries to center it. And finally, Kim St. Pierre gets a whistle at 11.15 of this first period. Threatening again here in the first period. That play broken up. And the Swedes sent it down into the Canadian zone. Samuelson hustling down for it. But it'll be called on the icing. A reminder that later tonight at 11.30 Eastern time, we'll have the USA versus Russia in men's hockey. Both teams unbeaten. The Americans with a big 6-0 win over Finland yesterday. The Russians defeating Belarus 6-4. Two unbeaten teams going head to head in the men's tournament. Holt wins the draw. Back to the point. One time shot from Campbell, deflected by Edstrand. And the puck sails up and over the glass at 11 49. Haley Wickenheiser, when she's on her game, she motivates so many of her other players. She's flying tonight. You can tell through this whole tournament, she's a much more mature player from her last Olympics. She's doing all the little things right for the success of her team. Super fan go nuts in the stands. <laughs> yes, it is a decidedly Canadian crowd here tonight in Provo at the Peaks Arena. Capacity 6,500 as Campbell comes out from behind the Swedish goal. Backhand pass looking for Pounder pinching from the point. Now Wickenheiser starts out right in front on the backhand in the slot goes high and it hits Allen in the face mask and under international rules. That warrants an immediate whistle. It's a safety reason that it's done, and, and it's a, I think it's good for the goaltender so that they have a chance to recoup. Great moves by Haley Wickenheiser, though, totally dancing around the, around the defense. Confidence with the puck. Look at the shot off of her backhand, getting it so high so quickly. Right around. Maria Ruth left her standing like a pylon. Here's a chance now. Heffert's backhand shot from the point. Rebound. Becky Keller, another shot from Heffert. Hit the goalpost. Sanahara bounces it back behind the net. Dupuis comes up with it for Canada. Sanahara loses her stick. And the Swedes bang it along the boards. Mike plays it up. Lindbergh ahead to Lindholm. And the puck bounces into the Swedish bench. That goal has really motivated the Canadians. Pressuring Annika Allen. She's being active the whole time. Keller coming off and watch this play by Jana Heffer just hitting the post on the far side. Jana Heffer being a little sleek, coming in from behind the net, turning around, finding the puck, and putting it on her back. So Storks ahead for Bayshard, intercepted by Ellsberg. Battling along the line, it's Sostorix getting it back to center ice. Ellsberg. Back to Anderson. Anderson plays it along the boards. 
Intercepted by Bayshard. Now Anderson has control, gains the Canadian line. Anderson, quick shot over the block of Chartrand, and St. Pierre turns that one aside routinely. Bottrell starting out with Bayshard. Bottrell in the slot, drops it. It's a historic shot right on rebound, just smothered in time with Bayshard right there. Bottrell playing very, very poised, looking for players on the outside. Isabel Chartrand, her first Olympics, has been with the under-22 program also, Mark, so has had some experience internationally, but this is her first big-time, big Olympic time. <laughs> well, Isabel Chartrand got her first goal in the game against Russia, although it appeared to be deflected, it was, in fact, awarded to her, and she was so excited, Sherry Piper said afterwards, even though she got her stick on it, I couldn't tell her I got the deflection because she was too excited. So the goal was, in fact, awarded to Chartrand. Amblad tries to get it out, finally gets it to center ice, where Brisson is waiting. When you see someone jumping up and down on the blue line, you definitely don't want to take that woman away from them. Chant goes up for Canada again. Here's Piper with Willette and Antal. This is the kid line. Antal, stick handling across the slot to Brisson. Shot short side and gloved by Allen. You're watching our coverage of the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. What if General Motors hadn't invented the airbag? Or safety glass? Or the rollover test? Or the crash test dummy? What if GM hadn't invented the concrete highway divider? Would you still feel safe getting into a car? As the world's largest automobile maker, we're not only committed to improving our cars, we're committed to improving all cars. Welcome back to the Peaks Arena in Provo, Utah. Canada leading Sweden one to nothing here in the first period. Here's Danielle Goyeth, the veteran and leading goal scorer from Nagano. She can't get there in time as icing is called against Canada. It's just a, almost caught up to it, and that's the speed you like to see. It was just bounced off. Danielle Goyeth just could not reach it, but driving in hard, trying to get the puck, even though she knew it might be a whistle. Ulrika Lindstrom has been on the national team since 99, so a little bit of inexperience, but enjoying this moment at the Olympics. Ellsberg plays it along the boards, then pinches in from the blue line. Checked from behind by Wickenheiser, who gloves it ahead. And the Canadians will be called for the hand pass. And they're complaining that it went off one of the Swedish sticks. But the faceoff will be inside the Canadian zone to the right of Kim St. Pierre. This official staff has struggled a little bit with communicating with each other today. There's been a couple times where it's been questionable. Well, now the uh, referee and linesman are having a chat about the call. Anu Hermon and Martina Konstantinova. They're going to go into their area of safety and you'll, you'll notice that it's going to be out here at center ice. Here's where it happened as Wickenheiser gloves the puck ahead, right there. And it's in the defensive zone. And it's so played by the up. Swede. But so it's in it, the defensive zone, it's allowed to be played, so it should be something that should be allowed to happen. There's Therese Brisson also making a case, but the Canadians lose the appeal as Silvajo looks a little upset on the Canadian bench. The faceoff will be to the right of St. Pierre. Wickenheiser loses the draw. Back to Ellsberg at the point. Pressure from Campbell, and Canada comes up with it. Here's Goyet off the boards to Cassie Campbell, and she can't catch up to that bounce pass, and so Canada is called for icing, and the faceoff comes right back into the Canadian zone. Campbell looking to get in behind Vanilla Anderson and was successful. The pass was just a little bit off. Anderson with three goals in the Swedish championship, one of the top penalty minute getters for Sweden as we take a look at this Capacity crowd here in the Peaks Arena, decidedly Canadian, here tonight for this Canada-Sweden game. Ruth has it poked off her stick by Jaina Heffert, and the Swedes will have to regroup. The pass to Anderson gets past her. Almblad bangs it inside the Canadian zone. Back comes Heffert, ahead to Vicky Sanahara. Sanahara all by herself, in on goal, shot high and just wide of the goal. Colleen Sestorix keeps it into the line for Canada. Playing it in behind. Bergren 
tries to head man the puck to Almblad. She comes right back to Bergren. Canada pinching, can't keep it in. Ruth at center ice. And it's sent right back in by Jana Hefford. Great forechecking by Canada, keeping Sweden bottled up this whole period. And because of that, really creating some good offensive opportunities off of it. Omblad sends the puck down inside the Canadian zone. Pounder plays it behind the goal to Becky Keller of Hagersville, Ontario. Ahead to Bechard. Bechard moving it nicely. Good, good pass. Here's a chance for Botro. Low shot, kick save, rebound right in the slot. And Shuchuk couldn't get her stick free to get a shot on goal. Oh, what a quick opportunity. Bechard seeing Botro busting cross ice. Just amazing plays. Nice crisp pass. Botro now from Winnipeg playing it back. Becky Keller. Killer across to Cheryl Pounder, who lead this attack for Canada. Pounder shooting it inside the Swedish zone. Piper is now on the ice for Canada. Antel tries to pick off that pass. It goes over her stick. Brissot again, the bounce pass to Antel. Too far, Lidstrom plays it back. Now, Brissot will just slap it inside the Swedish zone, and Willette's waiting for it on the far side. Lindbergh checked by Piper. Showlander now starting out for Sweden. Swedish team gritty here in the first period, down just one nothing to Canada. Pretty, but really being bottled up right now. Canada's flying. Piper now inside the pass to Antal, too far. Peterson tries to check her. Pass behind the net, tails to the point. Chartrand pinching. Here's Millet inside the corner, comes out on the circle. So Storrick's pinching from the point. The pass to her is too far. Canada just missing the mark on some great chances. Piper with a huge shot along the boards, but there's no call on Lindbergh in front of the net. Pinching, Chartrand, her shot, rebound, is still in front, and kicked away. How many times can you call it, Mark, when the defense actually end up putting going into the net, making the plays? Finally, Colleen Sestorix dumps it over the glass to relieve the pressure that Canada had. Oh, good. Look at the way that Sherry Piper clears out, wanting to get the puck, comes up with the puck, and then goes to the net. There's our cheerleader here at the Peaks. Campbell leaves it for Becky Keller. Pounder now. Rink wide pass to Keller. Dumps it in off the stick of... Goyet and Canada called on the offside. So this Canadian team really dominating in terms of puck control, Margot, but missing the mark at times when there have been some great opportunities. And you can see that the Swedish coach wants to try and get them motivated, wants to get Sweden to realize getting out of this period one nothing isn't a bad thing when you've had almost 20 shots on that. Well, offense is the hallmark of Sweden's game, and they've only got six shots so far on Canada. Wickenheiser leaves the puck, checked by Ruth. She's bottled up by Goyet. Trying to freeze it for a whistle. The puck is loose, and finally, it is blown down for a face-off in the Canadian zone. You talk about those six shots, Mark, but I think they also have to be pleased with that because when you think of it, how many other teams and how many goal, uh, shots have been on net so far? Not many. If they keep getting between six and ten a period, they have to be happy. Daniel Sobajo made the courageous decision to release Nancy Drolet only weeks before the games and adding Sherry Piper and it has been a brilliant decision so far with Piper scoring twice in the first two games. Here's a giveaway now. Samuelson back to the point. A shot from Lindbergh just wide of the one-timer as she came into the slot. Dupuy and Heaney. The puck comes out and into the neutral zone. Lindstrom, far side to Lindbergh. Lindbergh crosses the line, a bounce pass, gloved by St. Pierre. And it's kept in at the line. Weichmann had it bounce off her skate into the slot. Dupuy is knocked off her feet. Here comes Geraldine Heaney, the 12-year veteran of this team. Oh, our pass is just behind Hefford, who is wide open in the slot. Heaney in behind the goal and bottled up as Sweden starts out. Weichmann tries to play it off the boards. Finally, it bounces out. Brisson for Canada on defense. Her rink wide pass to the blue line intercepted by Scholander. Canada starts out again. Both teams a little bit scrambling, Mark. I think they're just looking to finish off this period without making too many mistakes. 
Bechard battling with Ellsberg and Showlander. Bounces back inside. Canada will have to tag up on the delayed offside. Long pass intercepted by Chartron. Chartron bounces it across the line. And Chuchuk has to get outside to, again, prevent the offside. Here comes Almblad. Almblad tries to hit Sanderson. It's broken up on the check by Antal. Anderson sends it back inside the Canadian zone. 30 seconds to go with the first period. Quick changes by the Swedes. They're just having to get it in deep, and let's play a 1-2-2. Two, two. Let's trap them and send it back in. Let's get Pass. out of this period. Excuse me, Margot. to Willett just too far for her as she was charging. There's Piper with another check and no call. Cheryl Pounder, her shot gloved by Allen with 13 seconds to go in the first period. Have to be really happy with the way Canada is cycling the puck and getting it to the net. Now they just have to solve this goaltender, Annika Hall, and they only have one by her. So when they look at their opportunities in the first, they want to make sure that they jump aboard and start putting it behind the match. Cheryl Pounder in her Olympic debut, four-time member of the national team and world championship competition. Final five seconds of the first period. The Swedes content to run out the clock. And as the buzzer sounds, there is applause on the Swedish bench as Annika Allen faces 19 Canadian shots against only six by Sweden. And Canada has a 1-0 lead. Marco, what do you make of that? Well, I think Annika Allen is definitely the story of this first period, but I do believe Canada as long as they stick to the game plan and go, don't get too frustrated, they're going to solve her eventually. So the Swedish team looking rough one year ago at the World Championships, looking smart here in the first period against Canada. Brian? All right, thank you very much. Mark Lee and Margot Page. Now, this is off videotape from just a few minutes ago, a men's quarterfinal short track speed skating at the Salt Lake City Ice Center featuring the gold medal favorite from Quebec, Mark Gagnon. Here are Steve Armitage and Neil Marshall. There's the lineup for the second of four quarterfinals in the men's 1,000 meters. Top two will qualify for the semifinal. And this one involves Canada's Mark Gagnon, the four-time world champion. He's with Apollo Ono of the United States, Tamura of Japan, and Stephen Bradbury of Australia. Nine laps, top two go through. And as we move into these quarterfinals and in the semis, strategy becomes even more important. All the guys that advance are very fast, but you can't just be fast. You have to be strategically sound, know what's going on around you, be ready for those passes. And we're getting some early action as Canada's Mark Gagnon is forced to go to the outside. Apollo Ono of the United States has the lead. Now Gagnon makes a move against Tamura of Japan. Gagnon trying to get himself in front, and he does so with six laps to go. Well, that was a lot of jockeying there. The pace is not really fast. Everyone was just fighting to get into those first and second spots. Now Stephen Bradbury of Australia takes the lead followed by Tamura of Japan. Then it's Gagnon and Apollo Ono. Remember, top two through to the semifinals. And right now, it's the Aussie and the Japanese skater sitting one, two. Here comes Apollo Anton Ono. He decides to make a bit of a move, but he can't get through. Mark Gagnon is in last place with three laps to go. And the pace is hot now. Bradbury from Australia in the front really starting to make it move. Gagnon has made a move with Apollo Ono. Gagnon Finishes is shaping up to be. Top two go through. Apollo and Toronto has the lead. Kenya is in second. If it stays like that, those two will go through. Apollo Ono of the United States and Mark Gagnon of Canada. What a tremendously exciting quarterfinal in the men's 1,000 meters. All kinds of action, all kinds of moves on the part of all four skaters. It was a good close race. There was jockeying the whole way right from the start to the finish. I think all those moves and passes were clean, but you never know how the referee is going to see it from his vantage point. Here we see earlier on in the race, four abreast coming out of the corner. And somehow all of them slotting in to position going into the next corner. A little bit of contact between Gagnon. And Tamura from the Japanese team. 
And again here, Bradbury really fighting for that spot. Tamura trying to go on the outside. Just no room on the inside. And Ono and Gagno. And we've just heard that Gagno has been disqualified. Canada's Mark Gagnon is out of medal contention in the 1,000 meters. He has been disqualified. And it could have been that move right there against Tamura of Japan, forcing him wide at that point in the race. So Ono and Bradbury will go through. Tamura winds up third. Gagnon of Canada is disqualified and out of medal contention in the men's 1,000. Bring it on. cereal with their strawberries with a crunchy new flake mm, and strawberries right inside the box special k red berries the new vector energy bar eat or be eaten BF Goodrich tires with traction advantage. Approved. For control you can feel no matter what road you choose. BF Goodrich tires take control. Trudeau. March 31st on CBC. A medical first in Canada. A new non-invasive method of sterilization for women. It's innovative, but costly too. That's next week on The National. Dreams. We carry them with us all the time. Some we've had for as long as we can remember. Others are very new. Dreams can comfort us, move us, and inspire us to build a better life. Maria Ruth off for cross-checking. As the Swedes send it down the ice, St. Pierre, her pass for Brisson too far, and the Swedes will send it back once again. 55 seconds left in the penalty to Ruth. Canada out shooting Sweden 22 to 10. Keller ahead to Bottrell, Bottrell with Shuchuk charging on the right side, drops it for Hefford. Dana Hefford plays it back to the point. It's too high and it bounces over the stick of Geraldine Heaney. Trying to be a little too cute on the power play. They need to jump in, make the simple plays, get the puck to the net, go for the rebound, go back to what you did before. Lindbergh going back for it with 25 seconds to go and the net is knocked off its moorings as Lindstrom went flying into the goal behind Annika Allen. Very aggressive Canadian players going to the net. They're chasing the puck, wanting to get possession, and you see Tammy Lee Shuchuk pushing Lindstrom into the net. Lindstrom out of Bornskovic, Sweden, and 
And there was a controversial goal as Goyette hit Haley Wickenheiser all alone across the line. She goes to the backhand upstairs, but the goal was disallowed on the offside. That led to a vehement protest from Daniel Sovajo, but the goal was disallowed, and it remains 1-0 Canada. Definitely the right call, Mark, but really slow on getting the call off. Just five seconds left of the power play for Canada. Here's Sanahara from the point, in behind the goal, out in front. Frisson winds up, no, fakes it. Now Wickenheiser shot, right on goal, rebound, bounces in front of Cassie Campbell, and now a two-on-one chance. Here's Ruth out of the penalty box with Samuelson. Ruth shot, right on goal, and Kim Sampierre robs her for the third time in this period. That's the second time that Ruth has been right on goal, just a minute into this period. Bang, bang. Sampierre made two quick shots. Ruth is such an offensive threat. She gets a powerful shot off after she snuck in behind the Canadian defense, not recognizing that she just finished off her penalty and hopped on the ice. Ruth, a member of the NCAA champions from one year ago at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Here's Ellsberg's shot right on goal. And it's stopped and smothered by Sampierre. But Sampierre has been tested here in the second period, already facing six shots. That's as many as she faced in the first period alone. And Kim St. Pierre will tell you, I like it, I want to get involved. I want to start playing and get some shots. 4.56 gone in this second period. Here's a chance for Holtz, right on goal, through some legs, and again, stopped by St. Pierre. Sistorics, pass for Bichard, too far, through some skates, icing waved off. Bichard plays it back to Chartrand at the point. She fakes and has the puck knocked off her stick by Ruth, regains it. Now, here's Bichard into the corner for Bottrell. Bottrell, bounce pass in behind the goal to Shuchuk. Shuchuk sends it around the boards, back to the point to Chartrand. Shuchuk now, Tamili Shuchuk in the slot. Her shot deflects off a stick and over the goal. Bechard turns, plays it behind the goal. Shuchuk bumped and couldn't get there. Now Bottrell plays it back to her teammate. Shuchuk one-hands it to Jennifer Bottrell, who shot right on goal. Bottrell with the only goal of this game so far in the first period. Canada knows they have to change the pace of this game, need to get it back on their side, and they do that by forechecking and cycling. Two woman forecheck kept in at the boards by Sherry Piper. She drops it back into the corner to Dana Antal. Antal in behind the goal. Well, that in front, one-timer from Piper. Rebound, scores! Sherry Piper with her third goal of the Olympic Winter Games, and Canada goes up 2-0. We talked earlier about Piper's line being so aggressive and so confident and crashing the net, and this is a perfect goal to, to show that. Cycling off the side, you see Antel making a great move on Ed Strand, feeding through, look at Piper, she sees the puck, gets the initial shot off, but then goes after her rebound. Just Johnny on the spot, sitting in the crease, looking to put it past all of them. And this is why Danielle Sobejo added her to the team three weeks before the games, because she's a power forward. She'll go to the net, and that's how she scored her first goal of this tournament, going to the net hard. She's a little bulldog in front of that net. She wants the puck. She wants to put it in the net. She knows she's there. Piper with her third goal of the Olympic Winter Games, and it's 2-0 Canada. Here's Steve Armitage at the Ice Center. Thank you, Mark. We're getting set for the first of two semifinals in the men's 1,000 meters. And this one has Canada's Matthew Turcott wearing helmet number 319. It is nine laps of the Salt Lake Ice Center, and the top two skaters will advance to the final and race for the medals. You're looking at Stephen Bradbury of Australia. He's come a long way to compete in this men's 1,000 meter competition. Wearing helmet number 324 is Jai Jun Lee, the former world champion. Matthew Turcott will have his hands full in this one because Dong Sung Kim is there, former world champion and Olympic medalist, as is Satoru Tarao of Japan. A lot of speed and a lot of experience, Neil. A lot of it, and Jai Jun Lee, also extremely tough competitor. And we see five on the line in this because we're, there was an advancement. Tarao advanced from the earlier round from that disqualification from Mark Gagnon. So five skaters go to the line. First semifinal of the men's 1,000 meters. Nine laps of the Salt Lake Ice Center. First two to cross the line go through to the final and skate for the medals. All right, 
We've gone through two rounds to get to this point, and this round, even more important, because once you get into the final, you've got a three out of four chance just to get on the podium. Only four people in the final. Matthew Turcotte had the early lead, but Jai Jun Lee decides to take the lead, and then he's challenged by the world champion Dong Sung Kim. Turcott sitting in third place with seven laps to go. It's a nine-lap race. It's the semifinal of the men's 1,000. First two go through and skate for the medals. Dong Sung Kim in front, followed by Jai Jun Lee, and then Matthew Turcott. Dong Sung Kim in the front, skating a very defensive track, coming out tight of the corner and keeping it tight going into the corner, leaving the only option to pass on the outside. It looks as if Matthew Turcott is content to sit there as Jai Jun Lee challenges for the lead and gets it from Dong Sung Kim of Korea. Now comes Turcott. Turcott sliding into first place. Excellent move by Turcott. Awesome move, and there's only two laps to go now. The pace is at full speed. Turcott's got to skate a good defensive track now. Matthew Turcott in front, and here comes the Japanese skater. Dong Sung Kim is down. Turcott oh. is down. Turcott taken down. And at the line, it looks as if Tarao and Bradbury were the only two left standing at the finish line. We could get some DQs in this one, but Tarao is celebrating the fact that he crossed the line first, so he is through to the final. But how they will determine who else gets through, Turcott was in excellent position with just a few meters to go in this one, and he went down. Well, I can't believe how much things changed in that last quarter of a lap. Uh, Turcott was looking great there. All he had to do was stay on his feet. And I don't know if this is that last corner, but coming out of the, that's earlier in the race, this is with a half lap to go. Dong Sung Kim goes down. And coming out of this corner, Turcotte looking good here, comfortably in the lead, skating well. Dong Sung Kim, the defending Olympic medalist, going down right there. We're looking at the giant scoreboard here at the Salt Lake Ice Center to get the indication of whether Turcotte goes through or not. And Dong Sung Kim's fall really on his own there. No one around him is getting it wrong. And, and there we see Turcotte's fall. Back to earlier in the race. Making a good pass here to get into the lead. Looking very good at this point. Now he skates a tight track there. He tightens it up, comes out of the corners tight. Keeps it tight going into the corners. Very smart tactics. They have to pass him on the outside when he's doing that. And there's where Dong Sung Kim goes down. Still no official word from the scoreboard yet. All eyes are trained there he on goes. the scoreboard. Just gets his weight wrong. The referee is conferring with the judges at ringside here at the Salt Lake Ice Center. Tarao has been disqualified. Remember, he crossed the line first. Turcotte has been advanced. Matthew Turcotte of Canada has been advanced, and that's justice. Well, it's ironic because it's Tarao who was in the final from an advancement. Mark Gagnon bumping him in the quarterfinal. And now it's Tarao who contacts with Turcotte, causing that fall. We'll get a look at it here. Coming out of the corner, Turcotte looking good. And you know what? It was Jai Jun Lee who caused that fall. And there's Turcotte's reaction. Yes, he knows he's through. He'll skate for the medals in the men's 1,000 meters. Stephen Bradbury qualifies along with Jai Jun Lee and Canada's Matthew Turcotte. So they will skate in the final 
at the 1,000 meters. They're now introducing the second semifinal. This is a 17-year-old from Korea on. And next to him, listen to the applause here now for Apollo Ono, the 19-year-old from Seattle. Tamura of Japan and Fabio Carta of Italy making up this foursome. And again, the top two will advance to the final and skate for the medals in the men's 1,000 meters. On, Ono, Carta, and Tamura. Well, there's only four skaters in this final, but what a stacked final this is. All these guys extremely fast, extremely experienced. On, really an unknown quantity for the Koreans, but he wouldn't be here if he couldn't handle the pressure. Apollo Ono making a move to get into second place. The 19-year-old from Seattle picked by some to win four gold medals in short track speed skating. Right now he's in second place. The first two going through to the final to join Bradbury, Turcotte, and Jai Jun Lee. And on the Korean in the lead, doing a good job just to make their team so much depth in Korean short track and big stars, almost movie star status in Korea, the short track skaters have. Five laps to go. It is on in front, followed by Apollo Ono. Then it's Fabio Carta, the always dangerous Fabio Carta. He can move from anywhere, but on isn't giving up the lead right now. Now the pace picks up. Here comes Carter moving to the outside. The, the pace is quick, and there's nowhere to go. There's a tight track. Odo makes his move. Now Carter comes back to challenge. It's Odo and Carter. Now on makes a move. He slides into second place. Odo still in front with a lap to go. Top two go through. Apollo Odo at the line. And oh, what a close finish for that second spot to put the skater through to the final and skate for the medals in the men's 1,000 meters. What an impressive race. So many passes there, but each one a very clean pass, no contact. Very difficult to do at that speed. You're already trying to go as fast as you can and to try to find that extra little bit of speed to make the pass, so difficult to do. A tremendous race here in the second semifinal of the men's 1,000 meters on Ono, Carter, and Tamura. Look at the finish. Look how close it was. It looks as if it'll be Ono and On going through to the final. Now, let's go down to Brenda Irvin. Matthew Turcott advances to the finals of this men's 1,000 meters. Can you tell me about that last race? Um, I made a great pass to come in first place, and unfortunately the Chinese had to push me in order to try and win the race, but uh, the referees made a good call, I think, by advancing me, and I'm really glad I, I made it there. <laughs> Is there anything you're going to do differently in the finals? No, just try and win. Okay, good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> It was a shot of Turcotte at the last corner. And Zhai Jun Li, the Chinese skater who went down with him, actually the one that bumped him, causing him to fall. But the DQ going to Tarao, and that may have been from just before this shot when Tarao contacted Zhai Jun Li. And <laughs> joy, pure joy for Turcotte as he waited for that decision. So it'll be Stephen Bradbury of Australia, Canada's Matthew Turcotte, Korea's Dong Sung Kim, Ahn of Korea, and Apollo Anton Ono of the United States, who will skate for the medals in the men's 1,000 meters. And if the semifinals were any indication, Neil, it's going to be an outstanding final for the medals. Oh, no kidding. And we will have five on the line again because of the ad advancement of Turcotte. So it will be a very tight, hard-fought race, lots of passing. We're getting set now for the first of two semifinals in the women's 500 meters. Caroline Holosey, Marazzini, Yang Yang A still looking for that first ever medal in individual Olympic competition. Yun Kyung Choi and Canada's Isabel Charest. They've just introduced Caroline Holosey. 
Next to her, Marazzini of Italy. And then next to her, the five-time world champion, Yang Yang A. The only thing she's missing on her short track speed skating resume is that individual Olympic medal. Next to her, Yun Kyung Choi of Korea. And then it'll be Canada's Isabel Chere. In this event four years ago, she was so close to winning that gold medal and took a tumble and finished out of the medals. Here's her chance to get through to the finals and skate for medals again. Top two will advance to the final. Policy, Zini, Yang, Choi, and Isabel Chare. In that hockey game, it's Canada, 3-0 over Sweden. But right now, we've got short track speed skating, first of two semifinals in the women's 500. And what a start by Yang Yang A, way out in the front there. Charay having troubles drawing that number five starting position on the outside, but she is in a position to challenge Halasi. She's got to try to set something up here. Yang Yang A in the lead. Halasi in second place, Isabel Chere of Canada sitting in third. Top two go through to the final. One lap to go. It is still Yang Yang A. Has Chere got anything left? Can she make a move? Chere! Chere at the line! Oh, so close! We'll have to wait and see the slow-mo on that one. There was no doubt that Yang Yang A won the semi, but who finishes second? Will it be Holacy of the U.S. or Canada's Isabelle Charre, who waited until the last corner to make a move against Holacy? Well, that, I wouldn't. I, I don't want to call that one until I see the replay and the photo finish. Charre doing a bit of catch up in the beginning, and here it is from the top. Oh. So close. Wow. Charre waiting for a few corners, not wanting to attempt that path. Oh, wow. That is so close. Again, we're scoreboard watching here at the Salt Lake Ice Center to get the official results of that semifinal. Here it is again. Great move towards the end. And notice the skaters keeping the back skate on the ice. That's a new rule. You're not allowed to let that blade come up. And Isabel frustrated after that. It looks as if Sheree might possibly know that she's not going to get through. At least the expression on her face would indicate that she thought she finished in third. Top two get through. Yang Yang A clearly in the lead, but who gets second place? And there it is, they just put it up. It's a dead heat! We've got a dead heat! 44 307! Chere and Hollacy both qualified! Unbelievable! Oh man, I have never seen that. The hundredth of the thousandths of a second be used before they do use it in short track speed skating. Not in long track speed skating. That is absolutely amazing. Here it is. Look at the shot there. Wow. A dead heat for second. Remember, top two go through. So Holacy and Sheree, because of that dead heat, will advance along with Yang Yang A from the first of two semifinals in the women's 500 meters. Wow. And once again, that means five on the line in the final. The second semifinal now has Chun Lu Wang of China, Min Jin Zhu of Korea, Canada's Alana Kraus, and Bulgaria's Jenny Radnova, the many time European champion, bronze medalist in the women's 1500 meters here in Salt Lake. This is a very experienced and a very fast foursome. Second semifinal, women's 500. Very fast start by the Bulgarian Radanova, the world record holder in this distance. Ben Jin Ju is down. So now we've got Chun Lu Wang of China in front with Jenny Radanova and Alana Kraus sitting in third place. She cannot let them get too far in front. Well, she's catching up here. 
She's got to try to set something up. She probably only got one opportunity to make a pass. And that might have been it right there. Jenny Radnova in front, followed by Wang of China. Then it's a lot of cross. Top two go through. Krauss trying to make a move. Has she got enough room on this final turn? Krauss at the line. And this time, I don't think there'll be a close photo for second place. I think Wang got it. Jenny Radnova of Bulgaria was definitely first, so I think it'll be Radnova and Wang going through. Alana Kraus was close, but I don't think she'll get through to the final. Well, unfortunate for Alana Kraus. Seemed to have a little bit of indecision there. A couple opportunities. She could have tried to go for that pass down the straightaway. A lot of jostling at the start. Radnova getting away clean. Showing that world record speed, not setting a world record, but really skating fast enough that the other two women not able to attempt to pass. Kraus trying to get past on the last corner, but just leaving it too late. But both the top two women skating so tight, making it much more difficult to squeeze into that second spot. Jenny Radnova leading the way in that second semifinal, so she will skate for the medals in the women's 500 meters. And there it is, Yang Yang A, 44-118, Holacy, Isabel Chere, and then Marazzini. Now let's go back to Mark Lee and women's hockey. Mark. Back at the peaks in Provo, Utah, Canada now with a four to nothing lead over Sweden at 6.17 of this second period. Haley Wickenheiser with her fourth of the tournament, a beauty. Jennifer Bottrell with two goals in this hockey game. She's got three so far. This Canadian team, Margo, is now really clicking offensively. This is the last chance by Sweden as young Samuelson came right in on goal and a tremendous back check by Sestorix to take her hands off the puck. Watch this. Just hooks her right at the last minute, and it was a bad mental lapse by Canada to allow Samuelson to slip in behind, but Samuelson is really slick with the puck and very speedy, so she was able to get that shot on. This is the kid line, Antal, Piper, and Ouellette. All products of that under-22 program at the point. Pounder's wrist shot is high, bobbled by Allen. Willette has it. She's 5'11", 177, one of the bigger players in the Canadian team. Being muscled here, though, by the Swedes. It's Holst and Anderson mucking along the boards. And the Swedes finally get it out. Maria Ruth to center ice all by herself, tries to get between Keller and Piper, but can't get there, and now it's getting physical. They bang it along the boards. Back to Cheryl Pounder. Pounder plays it across to Becky Keller of Hagersville, Ontario. Ouellette, long pass, looking for Antal. It tips off her stick into the Swedish zone. Lidstrom, back forward for Sweden. When you talk about a physical game, Canada needs this. Look out, here's Ouellette in front. They score! Cassie Campbell, the captain with her first goal of the Olympic Winter Games. Smiles, Cassie Campbell all around. Danielle Goyette just goes after the puck. We talk about physical play. Cassie Campbell drives to the net. And you see her keeping her stick solid on the ice. Ed Strand can't lift it off. Cassie Campbell making no mistake. Cassie Campbell with a one-timer, and she's thrilled as Canada opens a 5-0 lead here in the second period. Campbell from Goyette at 17-18 of the second period. She's had so many chances in the first few games just like that, and finally she finds the mark. As play is whistled down on the icing. I think you also have to think why she's been on the line with Wickenheiser and Goyette. It's to get to the puck to them. So this is a nice treat for Cassie Campbell, who does so much work on that line. Danielle Goyette finds her streaking to the far post, driving to the net, popping it in. Campbell, of course, playing defense in Nagano four years ago. They moved her up to the forward line to take advantage of her speed when Tom Rennie of the men's program noticed how exciting she was. Here's a chance now as Samuelson loses her footing. And back comes Canada. The pass ahead to Wickenheiser. She can't get there in time and is checked. Campbell comes up with it for Canada. 
regrouping back into her own zone. Historics ahead to Campbell. The pass hopping over her stick. Goyette takes it off the shin pad. Takes a slash there. And there's a whistle as Canada is called offside. Delayed offside, and Danielle Goyette pursued the puck. And that's not a bad play to make. They were on it, going to be changing anyhow. Anderson and Goyette mixing it up, and the Swedish bench no longer quite as happy as it was after the first period when they trailed Canada just 1-0. You start seeing fatigue set in, this is what happens. They can only run with Canada for so long. Swedes 2-0 in the preliminary round with wins over Russia and Kazakhstan. Canada 2-0 as well with victories over the same two teams. 7-0 and 7-0. A bouncing shot handled by St. Pierre. She decides to cover up as the Swedes were rushing in. Amblad right on the doorstep. Amblad stu stuck with wingers. Uh, Maria Root has been very successful in Erica Holst. She has a certain job. She just gets the puck to the net, but she makes sure she chases after it. She saw that there's a little three-foot rebound, and she wanted to make sure that Kim St. Pierre would cover it up or it would be open for her. Sanahara wins the draw, gets it back to Keller. Keller setting up as Canada comes out. Final minute and a half of this second period. The pass ahead for Hefford. Hefford tries to sidestep. Edstrand can't get there. Here's a chance for Sanahara. Her shot deflected over the Swedish goal. Dupuy turning inside the zone. Drops it for Hefford. Hefford back to the point. And Pounder controls the puck. Pounder across to the middle. Keller winds up. High shot just wide of the goal. Botrell now with two on the night. Leaves it behind for Shuchuk. She can't get there in time as it's cleared out by Peterson. Kept it in the line by Keller. Here's a chance for Botrell on the backhand. Knocked off her stick and down the ice. St. Pierre will play it for Canada. The center ice. Shuchuk off the skate. She can buzz. Her pass to Bottrell in across the line. Jennifer Bottrell into the corner to Bouchard. It's broken up by Lidstrom. Bottrell now back to Shuchuk, the Harvard teammates. And out comes Sweden. This is Beichmann. Beichmann on a two-on-two. -two low shot. Steered up on the glass by St. Pierre. She's been so smooth. Now Shuchuk all by herself. Beichmann back-checking against two Swedish defense. And her shot in behind the goal. And she heads for the bench. Canada changing on the fly. Antal out there with Wallet and Piper as Heaney goes back. The kid line is on the ice. They've been so productive, Margo, with eight points in the first two games. And Piper getting her third here tonight. Notice what the Swedish players are doing. They're playing a three-man defensive system to end this period. So the Swedes on their heels. Saint Pierre impermeable. And Canada with four unanswered goals here in the second period with a five to nothing lead, Margot. Only so long as Sweden could hold on. Canada just kept pressuring and pressuring and using their speed, and they finally got to Annika Allen. 5-0, Canada leading Sweden after two here at the Peaks in Provo, Utah, as we go back to Brian Williams. Thank you, Mark. Last night, the Swedish men beat Canada. Tonight, Canada all over the Swedish women. There's Matthew Turcotte. He's going through to a final in short track. He was knocked down. And here is Isabel Charest, a dead heat. She, too, going through to the finals. Back live after this. Our dad's going to build us the coolest treehouse. Cool. Yeah, he can build anything. trouble here. May I help you? Yeah, yeah. He can do that? Yeah, he can do that. I don't have a clue what I'm doing here. Well, let's see what you got. He can build anything. Never built anything before. Well, relax. I think you're in the right spot. He wants a trap door, uh, a ladder. Balcony. Rope swing. And these are the hinges you're going to need. I'm going to suggest 16 penny. Do you have a hammer? No. Is that a bad thing? He has about like 10 salts. 11 and a half pounds, feel it. It's really easy. You sure I can do this? He's a genius. Trust me. All right. Dad. Yeah. Thanks. Holiday bills arrived? 
time for KFC's Chicken Lover's Feast with three extra pieces of our famous chicken and all the fixings. KFC, it's finger licking good. A CBC documentary special. She lived a life of glamour and controversy. Princess Margaret, her real life story. On Information Night, Tuesday, February 26th on CBC. A CBC special report from Royal Canadian Air Force. We are closing in on this man. But we need your help to narrow our search. Regina as a Walmart greeter. <laughs> Air Force returns after the Olympics with all new episodes. See them at 9 o'clock on CBC Comedy Friday. First, if he can win this men's 1,000 meter final here at the Salt Lake Ice Center. And that huge round of applause for that man, Apollo Ono. Alleged to have conspired to fix a race at the Olympic trials with Rusty Smith. He was cleared of all allegations. But that hung heavy over the U.S. team leading up to the Olympics. Stephen Bradbury, Jai Jun Lee, Matthew Turcott, Apollo Ono, and Hyun Su On of Korea. The five finalists for the men's 1,000 meters. The race that decides the medals. It's nine laps, and Matthew Turcott wisely, perhaps, electing to go to the front. And now on of Korea decides he wants the lead. Turcott tucked in third place as Jai Jun Li of China and on battle for first place. Now Ono with a dangerous move slides into third position. But Turcott comes back to take the lead. Well, the biggest danger right now is clipping skates when it's so tightly bunched like that. I think Turcott making a smart move, get out into clear traffic. And on having the same idea. On not very experienced at the international level, but they don't let them skate from Korea, representing Korea in the Olympics, unless they can do the job. Ono oh. making a move. Ono going to second position. Turcotte in fourth place. That's on in front with four laps to go. The final of the men's 1,000 meters. On in front. Ono second. Jai Jun Lee in third. Turcotte's in fourth place. Can he make a move? Here comes Apollo Ono. He's made his move, and so is Jai Jun Lee. But Ono retakes the lead. Apollo Ono in front. Jai Jun Lee in second. On of Korea in third. Matthew Turcott of Canada in fourth. They're on the bell lap. Oh, boy, what a finish. Look out. Here they come. We've got skaters down all over the place. At the line, it's anybody's guess. Oh, my, could it be Stephen oh, 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 oh. Australia, who simply hung back. Everybody else fell down. It could be the goal for Bradbury. They're going to have to look at this one again. We could have DQs all over the place here. I have never seen ever a finish like that in short track or any speed skating race. Matthew Turcott looks like he's injured his butt. And Bradbury can't believe what just happened. In one corner, the last corner, everyone going down. I think what happened, that was initiated by Jai Jun Lee. He was bumping with Ono going into that last corner. We'll have to wait for the replay. Here it is, coming into the last corner. Jai Jun Lee on the outside. He's reaching forward with his hand to <laughs> try to take Ono. Ono pushing back. And these three guys causing the crash. Oh man, what a mess. And for a minute it looked like Ono was going to slide across and Bradbury, who was way back, comes from nowhere, stands up over the line. All eyes watching the Salt Lake Ice Center clock here to see how they decide this one. They've got themselves a mess as a result of this. The finish of the men's 1,000 meters. Well, from my eyes, it's very clear that Jai Jun Li should get DQ'd for that. That attempted pass on the outside by o on Ono right here. He's clearly reaching, grabbing his waist, trying to pull him back. You can't do that. And the whole apple cart tips over here. On goes down, takes out Turcotte and Ono. <laughs> I can't believe this.
and Turcotte, Bradbury, who must have been half a lap behind. Turcott couldn't get by on because he fell down. You're right, Steve. On fell across the ice. We don't see it in that shot, but that was the culprit there causing all of this to transpire. And On loses traction there. Turcotte can't quite get around him. Well, we're hearing that Jai Jun Li has been disqualified for impeding. That's one down of the five. Who will they decide? gets the medals in this one. It's up to the judges and referees at ringside. There's Apollo Ono already taking off his skates. Well, this is a referee's nightmare. This is the controversy that can arise in short track. From my view, clearly, Jai Jun Li causing all of this. He started it going into the corner. And these three guys, I'd say, are innocent. Ono fighting back a little bit, but when Jai Jun Lee trying to pull him back like that, I don't blame him. Look at that great effort by Matthew Turcott getting to his skates and then throwing himself across the finish line. Remember, you have to have the skates on the ice for it to count. <laughs> and here is the order of medals in the men's 1,000 meters. Stephen Bradbury of Australia gets the gold. Apollo Ono, the silver, and Matthew Turcott of Canada picks up the bronze medal. Stephen Bradbury of Australia, that must be the Australian's first ever gold medal in the Winter Olympics. Apollo Ono, who's picked by many to win four gold in short track speed skating, gets the silver in the men's 1,000, and Matthew Turcott of Canada picks up the bronze. Well, it doesn't get any crazier than that. <laughs> Look at Bradbury, you can't believe it. Stephen Bradbury, who was not a factor in this race, just simply stayed on his feet and picked up the gold in the men's 1,000, the bronze to Canada's Matthew Turcott. Brian? Thank you, Steve. That is, that is great entertainment. Now, I know the short trackers don't like the description roller derby on ice, but you at home tell me, isn't that exactly what it looks like? And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Uh, tremendously exciting bronze medal for Matthew Turcotte. Still to come the final in the women's 500 in short track. And that features Montreal's Isabel Charest. We take a break at quarter to nine here in the Mountain Time Zone in 45 minutes. Live, the men's hockey game between <laughs> Russia and the United States. Now you tell me. That's not roller derby a nice great effort though by Matthew Turcott. Future Shop service specialists install more than hardware and software. They install possibilities. Cuz life's full of great moments. Why not upgrade them? Future Shock. You'll like what the future has in store. When I look back, I realize if I had made that one decision differently, I might not have made it to the Olympics or the World Championships. When I look back, I'm grateful that I gave my life to skating and not to smoking. This year, over 45,000 Canadians will die from tobacco. That's why it's critical to take strong action to reduce smoking. Tobacco. We can live without it. A message from the Government of Canada. Don't think of your next job as your next job. Think of it as a long-term life enhancement upgrade. Make it great. Make it sing. Report to your future first thing Monday morning and bring your own coffee. The good kind. You know what? People do it every day. And you're a people. So you can do it too. See you Monday. Post your resume today on monster.ca. You the monster. Last year, taxpayers received an average refund of $715. Did you get all you deserve? How will you know? To make sure you maximized your refund, H&R Block will double check last year's tax return free. We can file an adjustment on past returns. You could get more money back.
There is the Australian and that is the first gold medal. That is Stephen Bradbury. First gold medal for Australia in the history of the Winter Olympics. It is the second medal overall. Four years ago in Nagano, the Australians had a bronze. We're checking that right now. I believe that bronze was in freestyle skiing, but that is without question the first gold ever for Australia at the Winter Games and their second medal overall. Let's show you the last two laps again in a wild men's 1,000 meters. The great Apollo Ono, the leader, the 19-year-old from Seattle that was on the front of Sports Illustrated. Now you see the Chinese skater and Apollo Ono fighting. They crash into the boards. The Australian goes through. Ono crosses the line, and there is Matthew Turcotte crossing the line, and Stephen Bradbury can't believe it as he wins the gold medal first in Australian history. Steve, I don't know if the women's 500 will be as exciting, but uh, let's go back to you. I don't know how we're going to top that, Brian, but uh, we'll try. This is the final of the women's 500. There's Jenny Radnova of Bulgaria. She won a bronze medal in the women's 1500 meters here in Salt Lake the other night. And she is with Yang Yang A, Chen Lu Wang, Isabel Chere, and Caroline Holosey. If you thought the men's 1000 meters was exciting, this one should be outstanding. Holosey getting a huge round of applause from the crowd here at the Salt Lake Ice Center. Isabel Chere disappointed in Nagano four years ago, had herself in gold medal position and then fell. How many athletes get a chance to come back and try for gold again? There is Chun Lu Wang. She's wearing helmet number 118. Her Chinese teammate Yang Yang A looking for that first ever individual Olympic medal. He's wearing helmet number 122. Ready. Four and a half laps. It's the final of the women's 500 meters involving Canada's Isabel Chere, who finds herself in third place in a hurry. Well, that's not bad. Everyone got through that corner clean. We had five on the line. First obstacle done. Yang Yang A of China in the lead. Jenny Radnova sitting in second place, but making a move on the outside is Chun Lu Wang of China. Chare still in third place. Now Wang makes a move to slide into third ahead of Isabel Chare. It is still Yang Yang A of China in front. Jenny Radnova sitting in second place. Wang of China is in third. Chare is in fourth. They're coming up to the bell lap. It's over. This one is over. Yang Yang A of China finally winning that medal. It's gold for Yang Yang A of China. After so many moments of disappointment at the Olympic level, finally Yang Yang A gets a goal. What a great race by Yang Yang. That's the kind of racing we've seen from her all year and in the last three or four years. And you can just see years of frustration coming out. She's so happy she finally did it at the Olympics. Led from start to finish. Chun Lu Wang and Yang Yang A out celebrating. There's Canada's Isabel Chere giving Yang Yang a hug. She's been around the World Cup and World Championship circuit so many, many years. But the one thing missing from her short track speech getting resume was that Olympic medal, and it is now gold in the women's 500. Such a nice young woman, no one more deserving. She has been the dominant woman in this sport for so long. It is Yang Yang A gold, Radanova silver. Wang picks up the bronze. Isabel Chere of Canada winding up in fourth place. Caroline Hollisey of the United States finishes fifth in the women's 500 meters, but the gold goes to Yang Yang A. Brian? Thank you, Steve. Um, that gold medal by Australia, again, Stephen Bradbury, it is the first for Australia in the history of the Winter Games. I said it's the second medal overall. There was a bronze four years ago in Nagano. I thought it was in freestyle. It turns out to be in women's slalom four years ago in Nagano. Zali Stiegel 
from Australia won a bronze in the women's slalom. We've got a camera crew over at Channel 7 in Australia to see if they're celebrating the first gold. Following his gold medal skate, Brenda Irving asked Australia's Stephen Bradbury just a few minutes ago, what in the heck happened on the ice? That was a heck of a finish. Can you tell us from your vantage point what happened? Uh, I don't know. I guess the first thing I can say is I, I probably consider myself the luckiest guy in the world right now. Um, I came here to this Games hoping to make up for opportunities that I'd, where I hadn't skated my best in previous Olympics. I had a bronze medal to my name before this, but I wasn't happy with that. And I just put in my best. I wasn't as strong as the other guys out there, but um, you know, the, those kind of things happen in short track and, and my opportunity was there today and there's, I don't know, I don't know if I think I deserve it or not, but I'm going to take it. So I'm, I'm absolutely stoked. It's, it feels like a reward for so many years of effort that I've put in. This is my fourth games and especially in Lillehammer and Albertville in 92 and 94, I walked away very disappointed. And I guess same again in Nagano and, you know, I guess, uh, I guess God smiles on you some days and this is my day. How often have you seen a finish like that? Um, not many times. I, I can't think of any offhand where uh, four guys have all gone down together like that. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm just, I'm, I'm just very blessed. Congratulations. Thanks very much. That off tape from just a few minutes ago. Great to see the Aussies. The Aussies are such great sports people, uh, such great sports fans as we saw in September of 2000 in Sydney. And the first gold medal for the Australians, and we can hear them celebrating next door. Here in the broadcast center, all the television networks from all over the world are together. We are adjacent to Channel 7 Australia. And believe me, when you open the door to the studio, you can hear them partying. We're going to send a camera over there, and we'll show you what's going on shortly. So it's Stephen Bradbury with a gold medal. Matthew Turcotte getting the bronze medal. He is receiving medical attention. It's nothing serious, we understand, but as soon as he's free, he will talk with Brenda Irving. And right now, we will take a break. Live from Salt Lake City. Hey, lots happening on a Saturday night. We'll continue with the 2002 Winter Olympics right after this. Introducing the all-new Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that switches from an SUV to a pickup. Good idea. It's up today. Right, Brian and the Swedes are taking a pasting here at the Peaks Arena, Canada, with an eight to nothing lead now. As three Canadians get their first goals of the tournament. Wallet, Hefford, and Dupuis here in the third period. And the Canadian offense is hitting on all cylinders, Margo, and that has been the story of this tournament. The Canadians with balanced attack, and the Swedes tonight are feeling it. Jennifer Bottrell with two goals on the night and three so far for the tournament. Balanced attack is what Canada needs going into the medal rounds. As you see, a great crowd here, Mark, very enthusiastic, but they need to have that balanced attack. They want to make sure they're hard to defend. Kelly Bichard chips it out to center ice, and... Anderson regroups for Sweden. There's an interference play there, but nothing called as Elsberg rode off Shuchuk. Shuchuk now across the line with Bothrell charging into the slot. Shuchuk shot high, looking for the top corner, and it was very close as the puck dropped down close to the goal line, bouncing off the blocker of Annika Allen. The Canadians hungry for more, leading 8-0. Bothrell turning at center ice. Her pass too far for Dana Antel as the kid line stays on the ice. Anderson along the boards. It managed the puck to Omblad. She tips it inside the Canadian zone. Antel along the right side. Quickly up to Sherry Piper. Piper with three goals so far in this tournament. Only 20 years of age. Right in on goal and has it poked off her stick with Willette up there on the wing. Now Sweden starting back. Dumped inside the zone. Holt charging. Canada can't get it out. Pounder regroups in behind Kim St. Pierre, who has turned aside everybody so far in this tournament, looking for her second shutout of the Olympic Winter Games. And that's something so tough to do, Mark, when you're not getting many shots and still staying sharp. Dana Antal on the right side, long shot, glove, rebound, and finally, Allen will cover up 
for a whistle. 12-36 gone in this third period. Shuchuk throws it in towards the net. Look at it go off the shoulder of Allen and just in behind. Quick recovery by Allen though by her goal stick. You see her goal stick just before the line and Jennifer Botterill charging to the far post. Just watch this goal line, goal stick, batting it out. The Canadians have been hungry around the net, charging, and Canada has called a timeout. Danielle Sauvageau brings her players to the bench. You have to wonder what she's talking about here up eight to nothing and she looks a bit concerned as the Swedes Have a chalk talk at the same time I think She basically wants to settle down as you see Kim Martin and Annika Allen Annika Allen the veteran Kim Martin the rookie You have to think that Danielle Sauvage wants to settle Canada down and start thinking about doing things right eight nothing game 56 shots on net Let's start playing with some smarts right down to the last buzzer. Do you need to take a timeout for that? Probably not, but perhaps it's something out of urgency or out of experience that she wants to get her players used to getting the timeout. Sometimes, though, on these routes, players become goal hogs. Here's Sanahara in front, backhand shot by Heffer, just wide. Vicky Sanahara plays it back to Therese Brisson. She fakes the shot, steps inside to the Swedish corner. Brisson working her way around behind the net. Sanahara chips it back to the Canadian defenseman. Brisson looking, shot, short side, rebound off the pads of Allen. Lidstrom comes up with it and plays it around the far side to Bergren. Bergren can't get there in time as Heaney pinches in from the point. Heffer now behind the net, ridden off the puck by Lindbergh. Heffer battling. Finally, the Swedes come up with it. Lindstrom sends it down the ice to Weichmann. Weichmann has it. Weichmann pushed by Brisson. Then Weichmann with a trip, and there's a penalty coming here to Canada, and it will be Therese Brisson going off for holding. Here's the McDonald's game story from the Peaks Arena tonight. Canada with an 8-0 lead. Jennifer Bottrell of Winnipeg with two goals. Danielle Goyette with two assists. She's got three so far on the tournament. And Canada out shooting this Swedish team 2-1 to one through two periods of play in an 8 to nothing margin. But the Swedes still showing some moxie here in the third period, challenging the Canadians. And right now they've got a power play with Therese Brisson off at 13-26 for holding the stick. Wickenheiser has it knocked off her stick as the Swedes come to center ice. It's Holst. A reminder, we will have the medal ceremony from Short track speed skating coming up. Here's a chance now, a threatening chance for Holst from behind the goal. Tried to jam it in, but Kim St. Pierre sprawled in behind the goal line. Somehow managed to keep it out. Getting a little bit of help from the official to be able to get the stick out. Bray Root just takes it to the net. Nobody goes after her, comes back and tricks St. Saint Pierre. St. Pierre tries to go to the other post, but look at Root come back. St. Pierre left a little bit early, but luckily was able to recover before the puck went in the net. Ruth with the big reach had at least two feet on the open side and put it into the pads of St. Pierre, who preserves her shutout. With 6.05 to play here in the third period. Referee Anu Hervonen. And they want to have a look at this, Margo, on the replay to see, in fact, if it did cross the line. Let's have a look here. St. Pierre's off the post. You see it under her left pad as she's just coming back. See it now between her legs. So from that, I would have to say the puck is not below the goal when the whistle went. There are the replay officials here at the Peaks Arena, and it did look like it went underneath her pads to her right leg and stayed out. They will look at it again and make a judgment. And again, the officials made the call. They called it no goal. They then went upstairs, so it's just a matter of whether they can get an angle on this to see anything different from what we saw. But if it's from what we saw, it would have to be no goal. Nobody has scored on Canada so far here in Salt Lake City. Sammy Joe Small with one shutout, Kim St. Pierre with another. St. Pierre leaves her post too early to go across, and Root recognizes that, comes back, but look at where the puck is, left pad, then off her right. So the only argument might be would be if the puck, if they could get a camera to show the puck going from 
underneath the left pad to the right. Hard to tell from those camera angles. And the official has just informed the referee, Anu Hervonen, it is no goal. And the faceoff will be in the Canadian zone. Fans here, all 6,500 on their feet for this Canadian team. With an 8 to nothing lead, looking to go through the preliminary round, unbeaten at 3-0, and, oh, and on to the semifinals. Here's Ruth again, a shot hits a leg. Keller clears it, and the Swedes putting pressure on Canada here. Kept in at the line. Edstrand sends it back into the corner. Keller tries to play it along the glass and out. Edstrand keeps it in at the line. Edstrand with a chance. Slap shot on goal just wide. Samuelson now for Sweden. Her pass is broken up, and it's set down the ice by Dana Antal with 58 seconds left in the penalty to Therese Brisson for holding the stick. One of the best power plays that Sweden has had through this game, getting lots of shots off. Kim St. Pierre is doing a good job of bailing them out. Swedes looking to break this shutout. Trailing 8 to nothing. Ed Strand sends it down the ice. And icing has been called against Sweden. 14-48 gone in the third period. And 38 seconds left in the Swedish power play as Laurie Dupuis and that veteran line from Nagano come out onto the ice for Canada. Laurie Dupuis had a solid game. She's on that line with Sonahara and with Heppert for a reason. That's to clear space, get the puck, and get it into the slot. She's been doing that and doing some a little thing for herself by getting it to the net. Dupuis getting on track with her first goal of the games here in the third period. And this Swedish team not giving up with a chance here on the power play. And there's been another delay, and the Swedes are being penalized as Peterson heads to the penalty box. Josephine Peterson of Stockholm has been sent to the box. And too many players on the ice is the call against Sweden. Let's go to Steve Armitage now and Neil Marshall at the Ice Center. Thank you, Mark. We're getting set for the medal presentation in the men's 1,000 meters. And uh, Canada's Matthew Turcott will be on the podium to receive his bronze medal. Coming into this competition, I'm sure that uh, many in short track speed skating in Canada thought that uh, Mark Gagnon had the best shot in the 1,000 meters, but as it turns out, it is Matthew Turcotte. And what a race it was, Neil. Uh, the finish was absolutely spectacular as uh, Turcotte had to get on his feet and come across the line after everybody else had fallen. And the man who trailed throughout most of the race, Stephen Bradbury of Australia, will receive the gold. The medal presentation here at the Salt Lake Ice Center for the men's 1,000 meters. And here is the end of that race. I said it was a spectacular crash, and spectacular it was. Well, it was the craziest finish to any short track race I've ever seen, and it all happened in the last corner. This is earlier on. This is Matthew Turcott falling on his way to the final in the semifinal. It was an unbelievable evening. Short track has often been described, as Brian said, as roller derby on ice. And tonight, at least in the men's 1,000 meters, it certainly looked like roller derby with uh, everybody going down at the finish and allowing Stephen Bradbury, who was the fifth man in the field, to cross the line in the gold medal position. Well, the short trackers, they don't like that description, roller derby on ice, but after watching that one, it's hard to argue that. And Bradbury saying a few minutes ago, he feels like the luckiest man alive. And he just may be. There's Matthew Turcotte enjoying the moment. A 24-year-old from Sherbrooke. And Apollo Ono is coming out in a wheelchair. This can be nothing but bad news for followers of short track in the United States. On the cover of Sports Illustrated prior to the Olympics, picked by many to win four gold medals in short track speed skating. If that's a serious injury that could keep him out of further competition, remember the men still have to skate the 500 and the 1500, two events in which Apollo Ono 
was uh, considered one of the favorites. So we'll have to uh, find out just what the extent of that injury is to Apollo Anton Ono, the 19-year-old from Seattle. Let's hope it's not too serious and that he can continue skating here in Salt Lake City. Well, the, the crash was quite a, a severe one with all three men going into the boards at the same time. We saw Matthew Turcotte writhing in pain, holding his backside a bit, and we heard that he did have to get a few stitches. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal But I sure hope. It looks like Ono is getting up on his feet now. That's a good sign. Limping a bit, but he's walking nonetheless. The medalist in the men's 1,000 meters led by Australia's Stephen Bradbury. There's Apollo Anton Ono. And of course, Matthew Turcotte on the right of your screen, the bronze medalist. Ono and Turcotte, the two survivors in the men's 1,000 meters. Dr. Kim of the IOC representing Korea will present the medals. And I'm sure that Dr. Kim expected to see a Korean short tracker getting some medals in the 1,000 meters, but it didn't happen. Well, I don't think anything in that race went as expected. That race was all about confusion. I think it's carrying over to the medal presentation. The three men not really sure which part of the podium to stand behind. Stephen Bradbury telling Matthew Turcotte and Apollo Ono, I'll take the middle. I think that's where you get the goal. <laughs> Matthew Turcotte, the 24-year-old from Sherbrooke, bronze medalist in the men's 1,000 meters. He survived a test of fire tonight here at the Salt Lake Ice Center. And at the end, it's Turcotte who steps onto the podium to pick up a bronze medal. And it was a crazy finish, but after hitting the boards, at least he still had the frame of mind to scramble over that line and get his skates across first. The silver medal to Apollo Ono. described by some as brash, arrogant. He is supremely confident and supremely gifted in short track speed skating. And wound the sport for many years, as you heard in his interview with Brenda. He was there in 92, 94, 98. Finally gets on the podium and he's in the gold medal position. The first ever gold medal to an Australian in the Winter Olympics. We've heard their anthem many, many times in the Summer Olympics, but never in the Winter Olympics. And he can't believe it. The greatest thing he ever did was stay on his feet in that race. He was just a little bit behind the traffic. He described himself as maybe the luckiest man alive tonight. He survived and picked Ladies up the and gold medal. Now, the Australian National, National Anthem. Anthem for the first time ever in the Winter Olympics.
Games in this year. Applaudissons les médailles olympiques en patinage de vitesse. So many great Australian athletes have stood in the middle of the podium in Olympic competition, but never in the Winter Olympics, and that's a position that Stephen Bradbury occupies now. Apollo Anton Ono, the silver medalist, Matthew Turcott of Canada picking up the bronze in the men's 1,000 meters. Nobody, nobody would have picked this order of finish in the men's 1,000. Bradbury in the middle, Apollo Anton Ono on the left, and Canada's Matthew Turcott on the right. Gold, silver, and bronze in the men's 1,000 meters in short track speed skating. What a night, Neil. What a night. Well, we've said it many times, short track is a sport of opportunity, and that was the biggest opportunity Stephen Bradbury ever had, and he took advantage of it. Brian, I've enjoyed it. I hope you have too, but we've got two more nights of short track to come. So maybe we can duplicate what we've seen here tonight, the thrills and spills of short track speed skating. Brian? Thank you, Steve. It will be tough indeed to duplicate that men's 1,000 meter final. That is the first ever gold medal at the Winter Olympics for Australia, only their second medal overall. The first was the bronze medal four years ago in Japan in the women's slalom by Zali Stiegel. By the way, the medals there were presented by a Mr. Kim. He is the IOC member from South Korea. Now, when the Salt Lake scandal was on, he came this close to being expelled from the IOC for bribery. Yet in the election for president, he finished second behind Dr. Roga, ahead of Canadian Dick Pound, which speaks volumes to me about the integrity, or I guess lack thereof, of many members of the International Olympic Committee. Hockey coming up at the bottom of the hour, Russia and the United States on the men's side. Uh, right now, let's go back to Mark Lee and Provo and update Canada, Sweden on the women's side. Mark? Vicky Sanahara, Brian, with a shot that's blocked in Canada on the power play again as the Swedes have taken three straight penalties in frustration. Here's a chance right in front, and Annika Allen robbing Vic Haley Wickenheiser in front. The Canadians have outshot Sweden 67 to 22 and lead 9 to nothing on Sanahara's goal at 15 21. But this Canadian team has really turned it up with an all-out offensive attack, and the Swedes are frustrated. Bottrell gets the draw back to the point, kept in at the line by Geraldine Heaney. Last minute of play of this hockey game, a 9-0 Canada lead. The pass to the far side at the point. Brisson fakes the shot, plays it into the corner to Dana Antal. In behind the net, Tammy Lee Shuchuk behind to Bottrell. Bottrell right in front of the slot. Brisson's hard shot. Love save by Annika Allen. Swedish players have played a little undisciplined, and that's why Canada has been able to finish this game strong. Can uh, Swedes have not been disciplined. Bottrell now stopping through the slot. Here's a chance. She scores! Canada hits double figures as Dana Antal puts it away for Canada. Bodrell puts it towards the net and you see Antal just off the far post. She finishes it with a quick one-time shot. Canada taking advantage of the undisciplined play of Sweden, just not Sweden taking penalties, but also not being able to cover the back post, and Antel gets the goal. Antel at 19.37 of this third period, and it's a 10 to nothing Canadian shellacking. Historics now gets it across the line for Willette. She got her first goal of the tournament tonight in a balanced Canadian attack. Chartrand slap shot, score! Isabel Chartrand with her second goal in as many games. Canada having no mercy. Chartrand, one-timer to the net, and it goes clean through to the net. Just tees it up cranks it through, and Allen has no chance. And this has turned into a senseless slaughter. 70 shots on goal to 22 for the Swedes, and the Canadians are racking up the points. 
just six seconds left in the hockey game. You can really tell Canada's on fire. They're feeling very confident. This Swedish team is a good team. It's much better than the past in the World Championships, but they are definitely no match for Canada. Pfeiffer gets the draw, sends it inside the Swedish zone, and there's some pushing and shoving as the buzzer sounds. Kim Sampierre preserves her second shutout of the Olympic Winter Games. The Canadians prevail 11 to nothing on a tough night for the Swedish goaltender, Annika Allen. Canada, the only team yet to be scored against in the preliminary round. And I think that's one key. When you look at balanced attack, now you also have to look at their defensive zone, and they were solid through this tournament so far. There is a discrepancy in talent in international women's hockey with Canada and the U.S. in a class by itself. The Canadians with 25 goals, four, none against in three games, unbeaten in the preliminary round, and they move to the semifinals to face Finland as we send it back to Brian Williams. Thank you, Mark Lee. The uh, Canadian men certainly could have used some of those goals last night against Sweden. Speaking of men's hockey, in about nine minutes from now, live coverage, huge game, the United States. The United States and the men's side beat Finland 6-0 last night. And in about nine minutes from now, they will play Russia. You will see it live in its entirety. Let me correct something. I've just looked it up. That is, not the, that is the first gold medal for Australia at the Winter Games, but it's not the second medal overall. I now believe it's their third medal overall. There was the bronze in Nagano by Stiegel in the women's slalom and in the short track relay in Lillehammer in 1994, Australia did indeed, they're telling me now, get a bronze medal in the men's relay. And you know what's interesting? Stephen Bradbury, who won the gold medal tonight for Australia in the men's 1,000 meters, was part of that Australian relay team that won a bronze back in Lillehammer in 1994. Speaking of the Australians, I understand we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we have some videotape of the Aussies next door in the studios at Channel 7 singing their national anthem as they salute their first ever gold medal at the Winter Olympics. Stay with us. We take a break. And as we go to break, uh, just for one second, we talk about the Medals Plaza where bare naked ladies entertain Cheryl Crow. Those of us with a little cowboy in us that love country and western music, we have been waiting for tonight. As we go to commercial, our director, Ron Forsyth, tells me we are going to hear from about 500 meters away at the Medals Plaza a little Brooks and Dunn. 